So currently I'm serving as the operations manager for Burlington's Resource and Recovery Center, which is a virtual attempt at, at um, responding to Burlingtonians needs during the pandemic around resources and um, just getting the latest update, latest that we have information and access to resources so that we can refer people out and give them what we hope is up-to-date and accurate information, as well as sometimes just emotional support in, the, in this very confusing and stressful time. So given the kind of recovery information that the state is providing and other sources, why did the city think it was important to set up yet another portal? I think that um, at this time when so many, like pretty much every aspect of our community is in crisis in some way. Some efforts of duplication are necessary. There's, as we know, I think Department of Labor is a great example that one department, number of people who are wanting information, that's still, that's not to say that duplication is helping that entirely, It's but it is in some ways if we have multiple agencies and um, uh, points of, of access that can provide similar up-to-date information. Everybody is tied into different networks, different communities, and different um, ways of accessing information. And so the city of Burlington wants to be able to be a clearinghouse right now. That might change over time as we refine our efforts in different nonprofits and different um, municipal municipalities and at different levels are able to find their wheelhouse or their um, expertise area to narrow that down. But it, what we have found in those first two weeks that a lot of duplication was actually helpful. And what kinds of questions are people asking you? Or is there sort of a common frequently asked question basket that you have? Yeah, well, the, currently the Resource and Recovery Center is set up into 19 different category areas um, that has you know, started a little smaller and it's grown based on the questions. Miscellaneous category was growing and we didn't want that, so we've subdivided that. Um, we've got about 335 requests since we started on March 23rd, and um, the, they change where what the common areas are for questions change given the timing. Right now, it's about our mask ma making initiative, folks who both need masks and want to help making masks. Um, certainly, in the first two weeks, I would say small business support and unemployment were the primary areas. Um, physical health is a category that we get a lot of questions about, whether it's about concerned community members um, around folks that they see who are not complying with the governor's stay home, stay safe order around social distancing and physical distancing, um, or people who have physical health concerns and are coming to us around maybe they haven't been able to get through to the hospital, or maybe they have a transportation barrier in getting to the hospital or whatever their, their physical health might, needs might be. Um, certainly people wanting to volunteer um, is not, not just the mask making, but that's an area that we've found a lot of interest in. And we connected with the United Way of Northwest Vermont right away in our first week um, because we know that they are a super clearinghouse for information. They have 211 set up, they have the volunteer connection, but everybody was trying to go from zero to 100 to respond to this in our first days. So we set up a C-Click Fix portal for those who want to a little bit more grassroots and there's we know there's a lot of wonderful uh, mutual aid grassroots efforts already on the ground and we're we're not trying to replace anything a lot like i said before people have their orientations and networks that they choose to get involved with in the way so we want to share information as widely as we can so we have that city click fix portal but we also have our own behind the house um, volunteer uh, team that can act we're, who are keeping the frequently asked questions and the resources around volunteering both I need a volunteer and I want to volunteer and so again our, our our main goal is to get information out quickly and timely and that keeping that up uh, up to date information so we're changing our website daily and we're updating our FAQ documents daily what's your preferred way for people to get in touch with you either the email or the phone number. So our email is uh, the recovery at burlingtonvt.gov. I said the first, so it's Burlington at, or recovery at burlingtonvt.gov. And the phone number is 755-7239. Um, we found that um, out of the 335 uh, reports that we've had so far, it, it's a, approximately 50-50. Some half email us and half call us and either way is fine. Are you satisfied with the state's response to the COVID pandemic in Vermont? 
I think everyone is trying their best at this point to respond to such a confusing situation where planning is almost impossible. It's hard not to be in a reactive state, even though proactive feels a lot better. Um, I think that uh, I, I wouldn't um, put out a judgment on anybody's response at this time. I do think the uh, governor is taking it very seriously and um, the stay home, you know, stay at home order came in um, sooner than many states and is, we are trying our best to, or the state is, I know the city of Burlington and, and the Resource and Recovery Center is trying our best to comply and spread the word about that, that order and um, respond as soon as we can around the latest guidance. And um, I imagine you're probably working 10 hours a day or 12 hours a day or 15. A more. <laughs> yeah. A little more than that actually, but yep. So have you um, had any time to rest? Um, that's a great question. Weekends have been a saving grace. Um, right now we are not set up as a 24 seven hotline. We are, we take calls from eight to four 30. And, um, so we are not working evenings and weekends that might change if, if we saw that need. Um, so weekends are my time for some kind of restoration and rejuvenation. Um, in my former, like my still current job as the assistant director at the community justice center, I'm one of CETO's four assistant directors. Um, the Community Justice Center is all about restoration and the beauty that can come from restorative conversations, restorative processes. Um, so I am trying to find that restoration on weekends and a little, it, maybe dinner time. Where our dinner time has been sacred, where my standing desk, which is normally on my kitchen table, goes away and it's only for the meal. And actually, tonight I will be starting um, celebrating Passover and observing the first Seder and that will also be a work-free zone for actually for the next two days. I'm gonna try and um, mark that. Um, I will say this is absolutely a joint effort. We've so far, the Resource and Recovery Center includes 36 folks from six different departments. So all of us have been repurposed a little bit from our normal jobs. Certainly we're taking advantage of um, the expertise areas that CEDO staff already have around um, vulnerable populations, housing issues, unemployment, small business support, economic development, and we're branching out to other other departments' expertise, um, including Burlington Electric, Fletcher Free Library, permitting inspections, um, Parks and Rec. So we've been very, very grateful for this cross-team collaboration, and really, um, I feel that we're all trying to find our little breaks and resting points as we can. You know, the mayor in his uh, April reorganization speech, state of the city speech, talked about that phase one, you know, we're not exactly sure when this part will end, but that phase two looks like it's a 12 to 18 month window. So how are you mentally preparing for that or physically, I mean, in terms of resources, how's the city is the city thinking about phase two now, I guess is my question. So that's a great question. I can, I can only feel comfortable speaking about where the Resource and Recovery Center is. I will allow you know, other, the mayor and others to speak for on behalf of the city around that phase two prep. I would say that the Resource and Recovery Center is in a tighter timeline. We're, I'm already, we're actually this afternoon having a phase two conversation, which is the month of April and May. We're thinking of phase two because we were really, in, we were notified on March 20th that we were gonna do this RSC, which was a Friday um, and we launched on Monday. So those first two weeks were really just figuring it all out and getting our systems in order. Now, just for sustainability purposes and our own health, personnel health, we need to reorganize ourselves a little bit. So we're doing a shorter term phase two. Phase three will be a longer haul. And in some ways, you know, most of the staff of the RSC, our CEDO staff, Community and Economic Development Office that have been repurposed, are simultaneously trying to think about what those CEDO jobs had been and what is like what is needed during COVID response times and what um, RRC like an overlay has take press, you know, will take precedence and will reformat CEDO in a little, in a, some ways. So that still feels like many conversations need to be part of that. A lot of different um, people need to come to that table. And so um, we're not there yet. Um, I would say for the RRC, we're in phase two of like, how can we get through April and May? And then we'll be able to think of a little bit farther. 
Well, Rachel, I won't keep you, but thank you very much on behalf of everyone for managing the operations of the Burlington Resource and Recovery Center and for all that you do for our community, all the aspects of the work that have brought us to this point has certainly prepared you for this work. So thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to share. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye.